Yes and no. Yes, because the notion of local content, the phrase, if you wish, is relatively new. No, because actually requirements by governments to use industry and to use certain sectors over which they feel they have an advantage to prop up local entrepreneurs, local workers, local firms is not new. For instance, in South Africa, in the late 19th century, the nationalist government there was very protectionist. It essentially reserved, by and large, almost all the public sector jobs to the Afrikaners and bred a class of white Afrikaners that for a very long time were almost the entire civil service of South Africa, with a few notable exceptions. And this was a deliberate policy to breed that class of people. There's nothing that says that is not local content in public sector terms. On the other hand, when Nigeria became independent, that country introduced what was called the indigenization policy, which again sought to create space around which the Nigerian citizens, both individuals and local firms, would be able to thrive in the new dispensation by giving them some policy advantage. So if you look at it in its broadest sense, local content per se is not new. I'm not sure that uh, controversial is the right adjective here, but I do think they have been quite difficult in that for one, it's one thing always, with all policies, it's one thing for a government to have a statement of intent. It's another to have the capacity to see that through. So here is an example. As far as I'm concerned, while governments may use local content to leverage natural resources, the truth of the matter is, local content is neither a mining nor petroleum sector issue. On the contrary, it's actually a trade policy issue. And I'm often surprised that governments don't recognize this, that you don't prop up your local manufacturing base by simply leveraging supply chains of extractors, but that instead you prop up your manufacturing base by having a very robust uh, trade and industry policy, which is essentially partners with all industries in your country to be able to leverage whatever area of advantage the country might have. But it has to be said that in developing countries, natural resources are a distinct advantage. And so it doesn't surprise me that there is the temptation to focus there. But in my mind, that's a means, but not an end. I think there are several reasons. Uh, I mean, the first I stated in my opening remarks, which is a desire to extract more value. Mm -hmm. But I think there is also another very important reason, which is this, that actually citizens of these countries are themselves pushing their governments because they look at their foreign peers, they look at the multinationals, they look at the executives and they think, why not me? They look at these resources and say, in Zimbabwe they say, this is our platinum. In Botswana, they say, this is our diamonds. In Ghana, they say, this is our gold. In Venezuela, they say, this is our oil. You can feel it. It's palpable in the social discourse. And so this, in a way, pushes governments to find other ingenious ways of ensuring that they can meet this public expectation. So in many ways, it comes from that.